Today we'll see how we can use Auto DevOps to deploy an application to Google Kubernetes engine. With Auto DevOps, you can simplify and accelerate the delivery of any workload to Google Cloud. I'm Renard Rakaden, a partner solutions architect at GitLab, and I help customers and internal team members alike learn more about the tight integration between GitLab and Google Cloud. Let's have a quick primer on Auto DevOps. With GitLab Auto DevOps, it simplifies your process and saves you time by automatically setting up the integrations and your pipeline that deploys to your environment. In this case, we're deploying to GKE. What Auto DevOps does, it, it detects your code language automatically. It builds and tests your code. It scans for vulnerabilities. And then, like I said, it deploys the application to your desired environment. Before we begin, let's make sure we have a few things in place. The first one is a GitLab project with the Kubernetes agent configured. I have a separate video that shows you how to connect the GitLab Kubernetes agent to GKE. I'll post that link on this video's description. The second is a GKE cluster. This could either be an autopilot or a standard cluster that's ready up and running. To complete our task for today, we need to do four major steps, provided that we've completed all of the prerequisite activities. The first step is to configure the uh, Kubernetes agent. The second step is to install the ingress controller. The third step is to configure and enable the auto DevOps in your project. And the last step is to deploy your application. Now let's get right to the demo. The first thing that we need to do is to configure the agent. I've previously set up and configured this uh, GitLab project to be connected with the GitLab agent. Uh, so now what we need to do is to modify the config.yaml that's in the um, GitLab slash agents directory. How to do that, I will click the web IDE button here, which will lead me to the files in the project and let, let me edit the files. I will look for that full uh, directory, which is GitLab agents. And then the folder or directory I had created is auto DevOps dash GKE and there you can find the config.yaml. If you had created the project and use a different agent name, the agent name will be, you know, the directory directly under agents. So now the config.yaml, I will paste this uh, three lines of code. Okay. Now the first one is to have the CI access uh, property under, under that is projects and then the ID uh, parameter. The parameter is set to have the path to the application project. So you need to pick that from the URL. In this case, um, this uh, my project is gonna be pasted here. All right, so now I have it. Make sure the path is complete. And once I have that, I will hit commit. and push that or commit that to the master branch and then hit the commit button and then wait for the pipeline to complete. Let's now shift to the Google Cloud Console. In the Google Cloud Console, I've navigated to the Kubernetes cluster or GKE section and I will select now the cluster where we want to uh, use for this demo. It's the this one. Uh, it's the gitlab gke dash Auto DevOps cluster. I will navigate to the end and you'll see the actions um, contextual menu or the three dots. I will click that and I will hit connect. I'll be prompted with this uh, command to run on Cloud Shell, which I will click here, run in Cloud Shell. And the uh, Cloud Shell terminal will load. It'll preload the command that was just shown uh, in the previous dialog, and it will just hit enter. And now I am connected. Now, remember the command, the Helm command I had shown in the previous uh, screen or previous uh, section. I will paste it here, All right? And I will hit enter. So this will uh, execute the command to install the ingress controller. 
Now that the ingress insulation is done, it might take a few minutes, so you have to wait a little bit, but you'll know it's done when you see this um, command completed, and it should have like the load balancer uh, installed, and then the IP addresses might take also a few minutes before it gets um, uh, assigned. So yeah, so this step is now complete. Before we go to the next step, we just need one more piece of information from the Kubernetes cluster where we installed the ingress controller, and that is the load balancer IP address. To get there, go back to the Google Cloud console, uh, go to your Kubernetes cluster section, and from that uh, cluster Kubernetes cluster navigation, uh, select services and ingress. This will show you all the services and ingress running on all clusters, uh, but in this example, we only have one. And we see that uh, under endpoints, the IP address is in here. Okay, I c it's hard to copy uh, this piece of information, so I could just go to the load balancer or the service, the load balancer, and I could see the um, load balancer IP address right here. So it's easier to copy. All right. Now we're at the third step, which for me is the most tricky part of this uh, demo, and that is to configure Auto DevOps. To do that, we need to take into consideration three variables that I'm showing on the screen. Uh, the cube ingress space domain, the cube namespace, and then a cube context. We'll enter those variables in the uh, project um, CICD settings. Now let's configure those variables in the project. To do that, Navigate to the settings section of the project and from there select CICD. Once you're in the CICD settings, scroll down to find the variable section and then click expand. And we add the variables by clicking the add variable button. Now the first variable that we will be configuring is the cube ingress space domain. Now this is the variable that will help uh, define the URL of the project, which we, which can, we will use to access it you know, over the internet. Uh, we can use a DNS service for this. Um, and for this example, we'll use a, serv a wildcard DNS service called nip.io. Now to, to set that, we will use the load balancer IP address that we copied earlier and then append .nip.io. So this is your base domain, ingress base domain. And then we don't need the protect variable flag, so we uncheck that and then select add variable. The next variable is the cube namespace. This could be any uh, value, but this should be helpful to know that this is the namespace that will be used for when we deploy this uh, project. So we'll just select um, auto dev ops GTE dash demo. We don't need to protect variable flag and we select add variable. And the last one is the cube context. So this will this is where we integrate the agent onto the this project. We need to copy and paste the project path in here and then colon the agent name that we defined um, uh, for this project and it's auto dev ops dash gt we don't need the protect variable flag and we click add variable. So now we've set the three variables that we need for this project to work. Now let's complete the configuration of the auto DevOps settings on the project. To do that, uh, stay on the CIC settings where we just completed the variable configuration. And from that same page, go to the auto DevOps settings and click expand. Now check the default to DevOps pipeline. And once that's checked, you'll see a few options on how to deploy the application or the project. Um, we'll just use the default, which is continuous deployment to production. Save changes. 
And now we need to make one final change on to the uh, CI CD. From the project uh, page, go to Web IDE. Now we need to edit the GitLab CI.yaml and add this line of code. So this line of code, or a couple of lines of code, will use the Auto DevOps CI CD template onto the Auto DevOps um, pipeline. So we click commit onto the master branch. And that's it. Once the changes are committed, this will trigger a pipeline and we will see Auto DevOps in action. To navigate to the pipeline, um, there's a link at the bottom of that page, which has the pipeline number. I will click that. And from here, the, the jobs and stages will be displayed. And this uh, set of uh, jobs and stages are configured by Auto DevOps. We didn't do anything. It's already configured for us. Fast forward a few minutes and we see that the pipeline passed. And from this page, we can also see all of the jobs in the stages were completed. Now, again, to re-emphasize, all of these were configured automatically by Auto DevOps. And the ensuring of code quality, the building uh, of the container, the review environment, the security testing, and then the browser performance testing were done and configured by Auto DevOps. One nice feature too is even the deployment to production uh, to GKE was already set um, and completed right here. Now, how do we see if we were able to deploy this properly? Now we go to the project navigation and go to um, deployments. And from there, we go to environments and we see the environment that we set for this project. And since we only used um, deploy straight to production environment, um, we accomplished today's task by completing four steps. The first step is configuring the agent. The second step is installing the ingress controller. The third step is configuring and enabling Auto DevOps. And the last step is deployment to GKE. You can see that Autopilot and GitLab and GKE are a great match because you can accelerate and simplify your deployment of applications and workloads to GKE. You can also take advantage of features like pipeline integration and security automation so that your team can focus on business productivity.